first president of the Fourth Republic. Farewell, Commandante. He burst onto the scene like a meteor, but a meteor that did not burst into flames and disintegrate like all meteors do. On the contrary, it remained potent until the very end of its life, leaving strong footprints in the sands of time. The turbulent occurrences of the 1970s in Ghana, the overthrow of the Second Republic and the Progress Party government by the military coup of 13th January 1972, the takeover of power by the Colonel Ike Champong led National Redemption Council and subsequently the Supreme Military Council, the proscription of multi party democracy, the professional strike of 1976, the March 1978 referendum on the proposal to entrench military rule through the Union Government concept, the formation of the People's Movement for Freedom and Justice, PMFJ, to mobilize the no vote in the referendum, the consequences of the vote and the conspiracy to abduct the Electoral Commissioner, the palace coup that removed General Kutua Champong from office and ushered in General Fred Akufo in his stead, culminated in the emergence of Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins in the political space of our country. Charismatic, energetic, fearless leader. Such were the attributes ascribed by many Ghanaians to the man, Jerry John Rawlins, the young Air Force officer who announced his presence in Ghana's politics by the abortive coup of May 15, 1979, and was sentenced to death for his part in the failed effort. He gave at his trial an important insight into his character when he stood up before the military tribunal to accept sole responsibility for the attempt and to request the NCOs who were being tried with him to be absolved and freed by the tribunal. The great events that were to define his character and career followed quickly after his trial, conviction, and sentence. Three weeks later, whilst awaiting execution of his sentence, he was dramatically freed from prison by the insurgents of what has come to be known as the June 4th Uprising when junior officers and other ranks of the Ghana Armed Forces banded together to overthrow, to throw out the Supreme Military Council and install the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC, headed by Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins. Thereafter, JJ to all and sundry in Ghana. It is no wonder that he came to regard June 4th as, quote, that defined day, unquote. He re-emerged as chairman of the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC, when he led a successful coup that brought the short-lived Third Republic to an end on 31st December 1981. The tumultuous and at times lawless incidents of the AFRC three-month tenure of office and of the early years of PDNC rule are matters of record, winning him passionate admirers, vociferous critics, and determined lifelong enemies all at the same time. 
He was the longest serving ruler in our history. 11 years as a military leader and eight years as a twice elected civilian president, making 19 years in all. He was fortified in his work by his union with his celebrated consort, the equally dynamic Nana Konedu Ajiman Rawlins, who proved to be a sturdy pillar and invaluable companion to the very end, and who bore him four children, the eldest of whom, Zanetto, is continuing his tradition of public service. It was no secret that the relation that existed between the two of us, right from the heady days of 1979, through to my brief period in exile, his assumption of office as the first president of the Fourth Republic, the historic Kumi Preku demonstrations, my period as Attorney General and Minister for Foreign Affairs in the Kufour administration, to be my elected, the 2008 MPP presidential candidate, was one of open animosity. We did not see eye to eye. However, with time, things changed. We came to see value in each other and understood to a very large degree our respective perspectives. One thing we had in common was our mutual commitment to public service. My visit to his rich residence in 2012 signified the easing of tensions between us, leading to a friendship that lasted for the better part of some eight years. Indeed, when the Ghanaian people in 2016 reposed for the first time their confidence in me in the elections of that year, one of the first persons on whom I paid a courtesy call was His Excellency Jerry John Rawlins. From my entry into office, right up to the day he was called by his maker, he remained a good friend and a repository of sound advice. I knew that in moments of difficulty in my presidency, I could count on his considerable wealth of experience and knowledge. On those occasions, he came through for me. There was a symbolic gesture he advanced to me at the funeral of his late mother, Madam Victoria Agbotui, held at the forecourt of the State House on 24th October 2020. It was to be our last time together. He was called up by the clergy to receive special prayers as the only surviving son. He told the men of God to wait and call for me to walk up to join him to receive the special prayers. He whispered to my ears as I stood behind, beside him. I reminded them that they should pray for you also because you had also lost your mother. I was touched by this. It is for good reason that his well-known off-sighted ideals of probity and accountability, in which he invested a great deal of his political capital, have been enshrined in the Constitution of the Fourth Republic. And together with freedom and justice, the words of our nation's motto constitute the foundational principles on which social order is to be developed in Ghana. There are many who acknowledge him as the founder of the Fourth Republic, a republic which has proved to be the most enduring and stable in our history, and which has witnessed eight successive elections, three peaceful changes of government from one party to another, and five presidents. For all his revolutionary antecedents, 
He set in 2001 the enviable precedent which has since guided our country of respecting the two-term limit of the presidency and superintending the orderly transfer of power to his democratically elected successor. Whilst he was with us, he respectfully declined an offer I made to him in 2017 to have the University of Development Studies Tamale, UDS, which he personally helped establish, named after him. His reason was that, in adhering to a long-standing principle, he did not want to have any national monument or facility named after him. Two days after his passing, at the 21st Congregation of UDS, I expressed my strongest convictions, in spite of his reservations, that such an honor should be accorded him. I am glad that this has found favor with his family and the necessary formalities will be carried out to achieve this. That is, the Jerry John, Jerry John Rawlings University of Development Studies, Tamale. Such is the measure of the man that the days associated with his political intervention in Ghanaian history, i.e. 15th May, 4th June, 31st December, and 7th January, are now significant days in the calendar of the nation. But the most significant of them all must be 7th January 1993, the day that ushered in the Fourth Republic. It is in recognition of this that I decided to commemorate 7th January as Constitution Day on the national calendar. It is perhaps the greatest tribute a grateful nation can offer to the men and women whose efforts led to the establishment of the Fourth Republic. It is my hope and prayer that he remains forever the longest serving head of state in our nation's history. For that would mean that the Fourth Republican Constitution and its enshrined term limits have endured. His actions were not limited to Ghana only. The African nationalist that he was he held unwavering positions on all matters concerning the wider continent of Africa, especially when they involved foreign interference and control of Africa's destiny, and was quick to voice his views on them. His chairmanship of the ECOWAS authority of heads of state and government set the example whereby virtually all his successors, John Ajekum Kufuo, John Dramani Mahama and I, the second, fourth, and fifth presidents respectively of the Fourth Republic, have been honored by their peers with the occupancy of that high office, reinforcing the Pan-African vocation, which has been an essential element of Ghanaian public policy since independence. I called him Commandante because of his admiration for the famous Latin American revolutionaries, Fidel Castro, Hugo Chavez, and Daniel Octava, a nickname which seemed to please him. I believe that history on balance will be kind to him and will render a positive verdict on his contribution to the evolution of our nation and the entrenchment of its democratic institutions and culture. It is entirely appropriate and fitting that he should receive a state funeral with full honors to express the gratitude of the nation for that contribution. 
my wife Rebecca and our children join me in expressing our sincere heartfelt condolences to his beloved wife Nana Konedu, his children Ezanato, Yasantua, Amina and Kimathi and his entire families for their great loss of one of the outstanding figures of modern Ghanaian history. A man whose sense of humor was truly infectious. Commandante, rest and abide in perfect peace in the bosom of the Almighty until we all meet again on the last day of the resurrection. Farewell, God bless, and thank you for all your help. His Excellency Nana Abu Dankwa, the